Proverbs 15. Wise use of the tongue. Or the argue. You don't argue with me or you don't argue with me. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. True, right? True. A soft answer requires patience, self-control and kindness. But some people don't know. They only know loud, louder, loudest volume. But remember, Galatians 5.22. They all need to turn there. No need. Nah. They all know. Galatians 5.22. Just look at the nine words there. Love, kindness, patience, goodness, uh, long-suffering, patience. Oh, wow. I can't remember. One. Okay, anyway. But a harsh word stirs up anger. And, I mean, if you read the, the even in the life of uh, King David, he was running away, and then there was this uh, this guy who was shouting uh, uh, insults at David and his men. Doesn't help. Why? Why would you do that? Okay. Or the other one in First Samuel chapter twenty-five. First Samuel twenty-five, verse ten. First Samuel twenty-five. It has to do with uh, Abigail and Nabal. First Samuel twenty five, verse ten. David's men they were refused by Nabal. And who is Nabal? Nabal was a very rich man. And of course, as David was running away, uh, seeking refuge from Saul, he needed shelter, he needed some help, some provisions and so on. <coughs> but this guy, this guy in verse 10, he said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants today, nowadays, who break away each other from his master. So it's like, David, you are <coughs> running away from your master Saul. Why are you running away? Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men who, when I do not know where they are from? And if you read, thank God, thank God, this <coughs> guy, Nabal, had a good wife. Her name, Abigail. So when she heard this, she quickly went to make peace with David. Otherwise, David and his men can come and just, you know, slaughter them all. So you read the rest of the story in 1 Samuel 25. So let's not uh, offer harsh words uh, in situations that would actually be unjustified. Yeah, will stir up anger and so on. So we go on to Verse 2, chapter 15. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly and timely, which is important. But the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. We look at John 8, verse 11. John 8, verse 11. John 8, verse 11. Do you know the story recorded for us here? The adulteress. She was brought before Jesus and then they want to stone her. Yeah. And Jesus said, He who is without sin, uh, let him throw the first stone. And who there? Nobody there. At least got some conviction, right? 
And uh, who went off first? Uh? The oldest or the youngest? You know why the oldest went off first? Because his collection of sin a very very long list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when everyone has left, it was time for Jesus now to scold the woman. Why wow, you indulge in such activities? Is that what Jesus did? No. no. She said, no, he said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Okay. So he used the tongue, his tongue, rightly and kindly. So let's do that as well. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. You know, the God is, His eyes are watching to and fro, looking for good men. So, we can't hide. We can't run away from Him. Whatever is secret sin on earth is open scandal in heaven. Whatever is secret sin on earth is open scandal in heaven. Let's look at, let me see, uh, Hebrews 4.13. Hebrews 4.13. Ah, yes. Hebrews 4.13. And Paul wrote, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Not today, but on judgment day, you must give account. Okay, but you know, we thank God that we got this uh, 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 spiritual basso. Thank God we got this Bible basso. You know basso? Sabun, sabun wash. You know where, where, where you find the spiritual basso? 1 John 1 9. You know 1 John 1 9? Yeah. You confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you. So, that's why uh, when the disciples ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. And in the prayers, Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive us. So every day we need that cleansing. Now back to chapter 15. Verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. So there is, there is power in the tongue. There is life in death. One moment you praise the Lord, next moment you curse me. But if your tongue is wholesome, that means good, good. A, a word that is gentle and rightly spoken. It is the tree of life. It, you encourage others. You, know? you, you learn how to encourage others. So we should drop all those things. Uh, so it's like uh, this, uh, that. Oh. All this are not very encouraging. Bless, bless others. Number five, verse five. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. So as what we read just now, uh, or we studied just now, I uh, alluded to teachability. So if the child receives correction, he is teachable. He is smart, prudent. But if he despises his father's instruction, he is a fool. Verse 6, In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure. But in the revenue of the wicked, is trouble. In the house of the righteous, now, eventually, when we get to heaven, the treasures are there. Okay? But while we are here, wow, I haven't got my gold, my silver, my all. No. But the treasures while you are here, they are the joy, the peace, the happiness, the, the, the health, 
your favor and so on, comfort. So, but in the revenue, in the revenue of the wicked, the lawless people, revenue, that means what they earn. Means whatever they earn, got trouble. You know why? They never pay tax. Income tax will come after them. Yeah. And uh, other things that they do to earn the money, they will always attract trouble. Verse 7, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the fool does not do so. So the lips of the wise, we are the wise. So we should disperse knowledge. Things that we have been filled with, things that we have learned, we share. So it is evangelism, it is sharing, it is testifying. But some people say, no, I'm shy, I cannot testify, I cannot testify. No, be a faithful witness. Go and check. Like I, I tell you, this, uh, this uh, good friend of uh, Pastor Day, Wee Tiong Hao, he will approach anyone, everyone, from the ground to the air, in the plane. If your father has a son and he's not your brother, who is he? <laughs> that is an icebreaker. My father has a son and he's not my brother, who is he? Half brother, no, 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 he's not your brother. Ah, so, the conversation starts. And you know who is that person referring to? Jesus, Jesus your father, big M, has a son, small, no, big S, and he's not your brother. Okay, so that is a conversational opener. But the heart of the fool does not do so. Heart of the fool. Let's look at Matthew 12, 34. 1, 2, 3, 4. Matthew 12, 34. This one, Jesus was scolding all these uh, hypocrites. Brood of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, what do you have in your heart? That's more important. So don't be like the fool. Because you will say foolish things. Verse 8, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. And you know, God, God's preference is for what? Obedience or sacrifice? Obedience. Obedience. So if you are not obedient and you offer the cows and the bulls and the whatever, the fats, it's an abomination to Him. But the prayer of the upright, hey, pray only, no need, no need to buy the bull, no need to take out money, pray. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. So God is not after your money. He wants your heart. Now, we break it even further. The sacrifice of the wicked, the sacrifice is external, internal. External. 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 Of the wicked, wicked, internal, external. Internal heart is an abomination to the law. But the prayer, prayer is external or internal? External because it comes forth. Okay? Of the upright. Upright is what? Internal. This is divine. So look after your inside, the internal. Be the upright and not the wicked. And before we go further, Isaiah 56, verse 7. 5, 6, 7. See, I give you very nice verses today. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 56, verse 7. Chapter 56 of Isaiah. The emphasis there is obedience is more important than external things. So we look at verse 7. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Which we read just now. Prayer is his delight. 
their their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. Eh? It means if you get your prayer, your heart right and your prayers right, I will then accept your sacrifices. You follow me? Not the other way around. So your sacrifices of praise, your sacrifices in terms of tithes and offering, your sacrifices in terms of ministry and so on, God will accept. But first, you must get your heart right. For my house shall be called a house of prayer to all nations, for all nations. Back to Proverbs 15. Verse 9. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him who follows righteousness. But he loves him who follows righteousness. Who followed righteousness? Jesus. He was obedient unto death, even to the cross. And God loves him. And God will love us if we likewise follow righteousness. So, righteousness is not of our own. Righteousness is placed upon us, the righteousness of Christ. In order to have that robe of righteousness, to wear that, we must be born again. We must be born again. Verse, okay, this one, before I go further. You know, people always say, God hates the sins, but loves the sinner. It's true. You read verse 9 again. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. The way, underline the word the way. That means, I mean, God, I mean, the word did not say the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. If that is written for us, then you know God hates the sinner. But God hates the way. God hates the sin, not the sinner. But of course, if the sinner continues to indulge in his sin, then of course, he will be rejected of his. <clears throat> Verse 10, Harsh discipline is for him who forsakes the way, and he who hates correction will die. Now, he who forsakes the way, then you know the word is apostate. You know apostate? Apostate are people who go away from the truth. Apostate. They go away and they get into cults, into all cults, whatever. And this is not good for them because they will face harsh dis discipline. If not on this earth, eternally they will be facing harsh discipline. And he who hates correction will die. Stubborn guy, he will die spiritually, eventually. Verse 11, hell and destruction or damnation. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. So, how much more the hearts of the sons of men? Okay, so what it means is, before God, before God, hell and destruction. Okay? But, this hell and destruction, these are meant for people who reject God, right? And so before these people are sent there, there must be something before that. So before all this, you have what? The hearts of men. Whether these are hearts consecrated, sanctified, washed by the blood of Jesus, or these are uncircumcised heart. These are hearts which reject Jesus Christ. You follow me now? Okay, so we read again. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. But so much more. So how much more the hearts of the sons of men? So you get your heart right. Then you know you will not be assigned to hell and destruction. And you know the the, the Hearts of men are not clean. Which verse is this? Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Jeremiah 17 verse 9.
Jeremiah 17 verse 9 The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So, let's get our hearts right. Now we go on to verse 12. A scoffer does not love one who corrects him nor will he go to the wise. I think we have got enough examples today. Right? The cynical person. Not teachable. Neither will he. Because he's cynical. He's a scoffer. He will not go to the wise to get wisdom. So we go to verse 13. This one is good. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. But by the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. A merry heart internal makes a cheerful countenance external. So, can I say this to you again? I've said many times. If you are happy, yeah, tell your face. Tell me, mm, I'm happy, I'm happy. But, wow, very constipated. Eh? <laughs> if you are happy, tell your face. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. And it is contagious right now if you are happy you make the people around you happy I mean I try to do that every time I preach and so on I, I put some jokes here and there get everyone I get you awake lah, you know but I also get you alive and, uh, you, you receive the word and so on. but some preachers are poor they are very good at making you sleep <laughs> I mean, the way they, they... I mean, am I telling... There, there are some truth in this, right? Yes. Uh, but anyway, I'm not talking about the content. Content is good, but the delivery sometimes... Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't hit your frequency so you, you, know, you slumber. Mm -hmm. So make an effort. If you get any opportunity to testify, to share or something, and you're happy because the Lord has touched your, your, your life, so, then share with the merriment. Share with the countenance, cheerful, the people say, Poor, you Christian, I also want to be Christian. I also want your God. Okay? When they look at you, I'm ching bang, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> keep, your, keep to yourself. By the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So if there is one verse here, uh, I, I, I don't want to sh turn there, but you know Philippians 4 4. What? Rejoice. Always rejoice. Okay? So you can command me to rejoice. 14. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. But the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. The heart of him who has understanding. I already got understanding, but I still want to seek knowledge. We can never learn enough. We still want to learn more. And this we are talking about uh, spiritual discernment. Some people don't have spiritual discernment. So you have understanding, seek knowledge. But the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. Or can I say the eyes of fools are feeds on foolishness? Or some people channel 8, channel 8, channel 8. Whenever they want to cry, they watch Korean, Korean, Korean. <laughs> and they can stand the whole, stay the whole night, watch Japanese, Japanese serial, what serial. I'm not saying don't watch and entertain yourself, but don't, don't indulge in all this. But anyway, the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. So, watch what you say. Okay. All the days of the afflicted, verse 15, are evil. But he who is on of a merry heart has a continual feast. All the days of the afflicted are evil. So pessimistic, those who are afflicted. But afflicted, that means down, right? But those who are up, because they are merry. But he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. He is always celebrating. And I always love uh, Psalms 23 verse 5. You know Psalms 23 verse 5? 
he lays before me a table in the presence of my enemies. So even if enemies surround me, my Lord Jesus will have that buffet, the feast of goodness, kindness, His love, His favor, His grace, His mercy before me in the presence of my enemies. And so, joy is a choice. Joy is a choice. Because it is from inside. It is not based on circumstantial events outside. And if you read Nehemiah 8.10, what is Nehemiah 8.10? Today I'm testing your memory. <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I'm uh, encouraging you. Some of these verses and so on, try and uh, you know, keep them here because they are really good words word for you. To know. Nehemiah 8.10 is what? The joy of the Lord is your strength, my strength. So if I can control this, I choose to be joyful, it is my strength. Never mind. You know, I, I, I visited Sister Quincy before she passed on and so on. She still had the peace, she still had the faith you know, that the Lord will restore her and so on. Yeah, not someone who are panicking. And so on. The joy of the Lord is a strength. So, verse 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. So it is like just now we read uh, of Paul. He said, in all situations, I am content. And I'm sure you know people who have less and yet they are very happy. But those people who have a lot, wow, Shanghai stock market crash lately. What to do? The bank is calling up. Should I sell? Then great treasure with trouble. Verse 17. Better is a dinner of herbs. Herbs means what? Chai. Vegetables. Where love is. Than a fatted calf with hatred. You find it difficult to swallow. Yeah. What favor do you owe the guy even as you swallow his fatted calf? But who can you think of? In spite of the luxury and the wealth and all the, the spread before him, he chose to eat vegetables. Daniel. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, no. <laughs> we have a Daniel in the class. <laughs> but I have a friend of Mary's calling Tan. You, you know who, right? Yeah. Another Bota. <laughs> but he had the choices selection before him, right? He was next to the king. But he said, no, I eat vegetables. And then let's see at the end of the days uh, whether who is healthier. So, better is a dinner of herbs where love is. And he was in love. Not with Nebuch and Netzer and all this, but he was in love with God. Yeah, he will not indulge in all these uh, 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 circular things. The wine and the, the, the dining and so on. Then a fatter calf with hatred. Verse 18, a wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger allays contention. That means what? Allays means he will lessen or he will relieve contention. Because you know what? He learns self-control. He has self-control. But if you are wrathful, full of wrath, always ready to fight, then you always will stir up strife. We have highlighted this earlier, so we move on. The way of the lazy man is like a hedge of thorns. But the way of the upright is a high way. Now, so you compare hedge of thorns and high way. If you want to travel, which one would you walk on? Highway. Highway. It is 
possible, it is usable, but hedgehog thorns are poke here, poke there. Only the army send you there, man. <laughs> right now. Yeah. Wow. God, open grass, don't let us go. Ask us to go into the thorn. Come out, poke here, poke there. That means uh, the way of the lazy man. Again, you notice uh, God hates the lazy, the, the, the way of the lazy man, not the lazy man. So it is his way that the Lord hates. And in other words, I don't want to keep company with the ways of the lazy man. I don't want to do like what the lazy man does. Because whatever he is doing, the way of the lazy man, we will avoid. Nobody will want to follow his ways. Sleep, nah, don't work, nah, you know, don't want to leave a hair to help the rest. But the way of the upright, it's a highway. Everyone will go. And people will come your way. No one will avoid. Verse 20, A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother, crushes his mother. Now, uh, again, all these are repeats. Uh. But he has written before, why is Solomon so forgetful? Keep writing all this kind of thing. But repetition is one of the, the things emphasized in the school of education. Teachers will repeat, repeat, repeat. You know why? Then he will register. Verse 21, Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment. Destitute of wisdom. That means this guy... Destitute, that means don't have, la, poor. He got no wisdom. So what brings him joy? Foolishness. So he drink, uh, drink, drink. Every day is 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock is happy hour. Eh? Drink, drink, drink. Drink until he becomes happy. And to him, uh, that is joy. Or he celebrates in, in, in ways uh, that has got, is not wise. And to him, that is joy. But a man of understanding walks up Without counsel, plans go awry, or it means disappointing. But in a multitude of counselors, they are established. But in a multitude of counselors, they are established. We also know, in a multitude of counselors, there is what? Wisdom. That means you, one person, don't have everything. It's good to seek counsel instead of making your own decision all the time. Seek input. In the multitude of counsellors, they are established. Now, we know of the one true counsellor. Who is the counsellor? Jesus. Where is this verse now? Every Christmas we sing. Remember Isaiah 9 verse 6. What's that? What is that? Huh? Wonderful counselor. That's what we sing, right? And who is he? Jesus. And Jesus is the word. Right? Jesus is the truth. So of course, he'll be the best counselor. So you know, every day I got 66 counselors. You got every time I got a problem. I got 66 counselors. I don't need to go to um, um, what middle road hospital uh, go to the psychologist uh, go to this and then uh, sit down pay him $150 an hour to get some counsel so do you have your 66 counsellors go on uh. the bible got how many uh, books 66 so these are your counsellors okay so don't rush first stop and go see psychologists, psychiatrists and so on. I've got 66, so have you. Verse 23, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word when spoken in due season, how good it is. I read this again, huh? then I'll tell you the two things. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. It means what? He has the right word. And a word and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. 
he has the right time. A right word spoken at the right time. Important. You may have the right word, but it may not be the right time. So you go to a funeral. Wait. I, I, I trust you will say the right things to comfort them. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> you see, but I say rejoice and always rejoice. It's in the Bible a right word or But wrong time. <laughs> wrong time. <clears throat> okay, learn that. Verse 24. The way of life winds upward for the wise that he may turn away from hell below. The way of life, winds upwards, you know, the wind, the wind that blows upwards for the wise, that he may turn away from hell below. So don't keep looking down. Don't keep looking down. Look up. You look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Let me read from verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, these are believers who have gone before us, but they are cheering us on. So, what must we do? Let us lay aside every weight, every burden, and what? And the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How do we do it? Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Where is he? Up or down? Up. Up. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So look up. The wind, the wind, the, the way of life wins upward for the wise. Look, even Colossians said, set your mind on things above and not things below. That he may turn away from hell below. Verse 25. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the boundary of the widow. The proud. Pride. God hates pride. You know that, right? So he will destroy whatever he has. But he will establish the boundary of the widow. And, you know, widow of those days uh, are pitiful. They don't have the husband to stand and fight for them, to provide for them. And if they don't have children, worse. They resort to begging. And so what happens is, those princes, those landlords and and neighbors and so on. Now is the best time to bully the widow. So what they do is they shift their boundary. So I got three thousand square feet. I push my stone a bit. Tomorrow become three thousand five. Next day push a bit become four thousand square feet land. And if you read, every tribe, every family, all have been assigned their yeah, land. So you are not to shift the boundary. But there are people who are greedy. And who will protect the widow? God. He will establish the boundary of the widow. Verse 26. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant. He who is greedy for gain troubles his own house. But he who hates bribes will live. He who is greedy for gain troubles his own house. Can you think of the one character who brought shame and trouble to his family? Achana. Achana. Don't know. He's in Hong Kong. <laughs> you know Joshua? Yeah. The book of Joshua? Yeah, they went out to war. Hey, uh, we lost Lady, how come? Because someone took an evil thing and brought into his house. 
his name Achana. And because of that, they were brought for judgment, and they and their whole family stoned to death. Joshua chapter 7, you're going to read Joshua chapter 7, verse 20 to 25. You all know the story, right? Yeah. Okay, Joshua 7, 20 to 25. So he is greedy for gain, trouble his own house. I also know of a couple of friends who indulge in gambling. I mentioned to you before. Uh, go to church, one of the biggest churches in Singapore. But he also loves to go Sentosa and MBS. But he makes good money. But over, over risk himself. And along came bankrupt. Everything gone. You know, who do you trouble? You can go and sleep on the street, I don't care. But now your wife and your kids are sleeping on the street with you. So don't be greedy. He who hates bribes will live. Because bribes are sure, you know. You sow what you sow, you'll reap. You want a shortcut, you will get back other things. Verse 28, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. The heart of the righteous, you, you and I, studies how to answer. So we are to, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, 2 Timothy 2, 15, we are to what? Study the Word of God. We are to dissect the Word of God to show ourselves approved. Right or not? So that we can be ready in season, out season to answer, to speak. And our Lord Jesus showed us the, the way. When the devil attacked him or tempted him, he said, it is written. It is written. But if you do not know what is written, how then do you say? So, study, study, so that you know how to answer. But the fool, the mouth of the wicked, calls for evil. He only knows profanity, insults, vulgarity. That's all he knows. But not the truth. The Lord is far from the wicked. Verse 29. But he hears the prayers of the righteous, which we just read just now. Verse 30, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and a good report makes the bones healthy. The light of the eye. You know, this is the eye gate. This is the ear gate. Ear gate is also important because faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. But eye, eye, eye is also the eye, the light. Because the light, the light goes in. Yeah. So watch what you see here. Sometimes you see the wrong thing. Then it, you know, lingers. <clears throat> so, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. And a good report makes the bones healthy. Just now, bang, rottenness, envy, uh, go all the way to the bone. But when it is good, uh, your bone is healthy. So, the bones uh, are actually very crucial and essential to our well-being. Do you know those, those people who are struck down with cancer and so on? Their bones are actually very fragile. Cancer can eat into the bone and it get very weak and so on. So, drink more milk, is it? I don't know, I'm no doctor. But they say if you have more calcium, your bones stronger. Overall, overall, I think health-wise you are good. Verse 31, uh, the year that hears the rebukes of life, will abide among the wise. The year, the year gate, that hears the rebukes of life. That means you are teachable. You are willing to accept correction. What will happen to you? You will abide. You will dwell among the wise. But if you don't, then you will be dwelling amongst the fools. Verse 32, He who disdains Instruction. That means he who refuses instruction, despises his own soul. He will lose his soul for all eternity. But he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. 
verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. So the opposite is, the fool says that there is no God. The fool has no fear of the Lord. But for the wise, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honour is humility. Before honour is humility. Okay, so this is honour. Okay, But there is something before honour is humility. But some people, they want the honour, but they forget about humility. So they are really, really proud. But you humble yourself, come to God in humility. He will give you the honour. So humility first. So last verse, let's look at uh, Matt, Matthew 20, verse 25 and 26. Matthew 20. Twenty-five and twenty-six. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. You know why? They want the honor. And those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be among it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. The first will become last, and the last shall be first. And it all starts with humility. So Father. We come before you humbly as your servants, as your disciples. And we say that, Lord, we can never learn enough. We are always hungry for the truth. And I thank you for the bountiful truth that we have learned even this morning. I pray that this will not just rest and sit in us, but each and every one of us will go forth and be the faithful witness, sharing His goodness, that Your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.